Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Bodacious Rant with Fern and Rye. Uh, love to see all your beautiful faces, but we can't because you're watching us. And I wish it was a two-way street, but also at the same time, I don't know. <laughs> or maybe not. <laughs> yeah, you know, live streaming can get very dicey, especially with comments. And it's like, oh God, I don't think I have the tough enough skin for that. But yeah, at the same time, I'm also like, I don't get it. So who knows? Um, anyways, so uh, if you guys haven't already, feel free to check out our mo- reviews on Hunger Games and Thanksgiving. Uh, those are the newest ones we just dropped for this upcoming Turkey Week. So uh, if you guys did happen to watch those, definitely see what you thought. You know, See if you agree with us or or if you're like, yeah, maybe I'll check these out to see if they're worth watching. Maybe give you a little bit of leeway that way. But anyways, we are talking about Taika Waititi's latest movie, um it's next goal wins starring michael fassbender and a series of other um pacific islander like cast and stuff like that let me actually pull it up real quick but um again non-spoiler review because this movie is just in theaters so uh feel free to give us a like if you like the video ring the bell uh for notifications and of course subscribe we totally appreciate you all and especially for this thanksgiving in all honesty we're very thankful for all the viewers and subscribers um you know, you're definitely a reason why we do it. And also, we just like to have fun, just talk about movies and all pop culture things. So thank you, everyone. But uh, so this is based on a, a true story um, where Michael Fassbender plays a coach, uh, Thomas Rangan, on the, in soccer. And he is uh, positioned to coach the American Samoa soccer team, which is literally ranked last in the international soccer world, which is just just sad, you know, but... <laughs> It's just it's just unfortunate, really. But we also so not only is Taika Waititi in it briefly, he directed it. Uh, Michael Fassbender leads it. We also have like uh, Ry- Reese Darby, Rice Darby. I don't know how you say his name, but he's from um, he's from all of Taika's stuff for the most part. Like what we do in the shadows, um, the Blackbeard, the pirate show. I forgot what that one's called. I think not Black Sails. It was uh, oh uh, right, I yeah, forgot yeah, what yeah. That no, one's called. I know what you're talking about. But he's in that one. The he, one on HBO. Yes. Yeah, they do a lot of stuff together and uh we're also joined by Luke Hemsworth where he was in uh Thor Ragnarok and um and Westworld uh, one of the Hemsworth brothers and he was uh Will Arnett in it uh, which was a great little surprise uh, Elizabeth Moss from Mad Men and you know Gem to the Greek and again just a great great cast of you know like and you know a- Asian American Pacific Islander uh representation just because again it does take place in American Samoa so good mix of that um and you know taika as much as i love him this is i think one of those movies i was like it was good definitely not his best uh michael fassbender though he was uh <laughs> he had a very dry humor aspect to this movie it kind of did work with taika's direction and stuff he was he had some dumb moments in <laughs> i'm just thinking you know which i'm thinking of the scene when he just gets off the plane and then just yeah as as he's coaching armani he was the real mvp of the whole freaking movie <laughs> we stand armani here okay we, we are armani support group he's he's our he's our mascot we love him he's the greatest we mean we need more armani <laughs> the little kid is so, like he's so funny <laughs> and he doesn't say anything which is the best part no I, I, if I had ten, if I had ten Armani's, I could conquer the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But other than that, it was um, it was it wasn't bad. It was still it had some great, uh, some good funny moments. Had a really heartfelt scene near the end that really got me in the moment where I was like, "Wow!" Did not see this coming from this whole movie. Um, mm-hmm. but you know, it's it was it was just okay. I I hate to say it, I think Taika. Is, I think he's leaning too much into his genre of just upbeat, positive comedy, which isn't a bad thing. But at the same time, it's like for a movie like this and like like Jojo Rabbit, I think was one of the best movies he ever did where it blended comedy and drama and emotions all really well. This one just tried to lean too much in the comedy aspect. And I think that's kind of what killed it for me. But uh, what did what did you think of this movie, Burn? 
Um, I think that's a that's a fair assessment where um, a lot of Taika's earlier work definitely had a balance of, you know, the more goofy comedy aspects. But there was also like a somberness to them. There was a little bit of a sadness to them where, you know, you're balancing out. It was very much like in the sense of, you know, um, laughing at your pain, you know, where it's like a lot of the characters that he would write or, you know, that you know, he had in these movies were were using comedy to mask a, a deeper uh, affliction that they had. Um, and that was one of those things that helped, you know, balance those stories out. And I think there was just a little bit more of a confidence in in the in the direction of those movies, um, you know, movies such as like Hunt for the Wilder People, as you mentioned, um, uh, the Jojo Rabbit, um, you know, what we do in the shadows is a little bit more on the goofy and less so on the dramatic side. Um, but, yeah, it, it just does kind of continue the trend that we saw in, in Love and Thunder, where the movie doesn't take itself seriously at all. You know, this definitely puts the comedy on the forefront. And, you know, while I do, while his comedic sensibilities do work with me, uh, I was laughing throughout the, this whole movie. And a lot of people in the in the theater were too. So this is just a genuinely fun time if you're coming for a fun com- comedic movie with silly characters and, you know, silly situations and uh, with just a, a little touch of heart. And I think that's where, like you said, the movie falters where I wish that little touch of heart was more you know i wish we had a little bit more of that i wish we got to know a lot of these characters more um you know the movie's very focused on michael fassbender's character and and while he's great you know he does a great job i think he does really good with the comedy here like you mentioned very different from his role in the killer which was uh very very yeah the the most the the complete opposite of what he was in this movie um but yeah i wish we got to to know um, a lot of these characters more you know this does play on that um the biopic you know the underdog story and it, it, it sort of like makes fun of that in a little way and and then also makes fun of like the the white savior aspect of it too so there is some satire here and there's some fun to be had with the tropes of the genre um but i i kind of wish he kind of leaned a little bit more into those tropes so we get to dig in to these characters and their personal lives um well, the the standout was probably the character of, of chaya uh, played uh, Kai, by Kaimana, if I'm saying that correctly. I hope I'm saying it correctly. Uh, but, you know, she's a trans character in this in this story. And, you know, we do get to see a little bit more of her personal life and, and her journey and, and her conflict and stuff. And I wish we that could have extended to a few other characters um, in, in this movie. Because, you know, while we get to see them as silly, fun people, we don't really get to dig into them too much. And, and that's where I really wanted a little bit more on that aspect for this movie. And it being only like an hour and 40 minutes, I think there's probably like a two hour version of this movie where we do get those, those moments where by the time, you know, the climax happens, I'm way more invested into the situation and, and the characters and the drama behind, you know, this, this uh, football scene that we're getting at the end of it. But as it stands now, it's just, it's fun. It's light. You'll have a fun time and you probably won't think about it after you, um, after you finish watching it, which is unfortunate because um, a lot of Taika's earlier work uh, left you, you know, with at least uh, thinking about the things that happen in the movies, especially Jojo Rabbit. Yeah, I think, like you said it best, I wish it explored more of the actual American Samoan characters and like the the actual people they played because like that were were in the movie because I think that's that's where it lacked it for me. And also, I have seen a an article or two about where the the main character uh, Chaya, the real Chaya. Um, she thought it was a little too glossed over her story when it could have been really impactful um, and just focus more on Michael Fassbender's. And, and, and while I love Michael Fassbender and I love the comedy, there were plenty of the scenes where it was so repetitive for him and what he's going through. That's like, okay, what about the other players? I could like, at this point we get it. He's going through something, but what are the other players going through for this? What, how does, how is this involved with them? So I think that's where it kind of lacked a little bit. Um, overall again like you you put it best it's light it's funny it's got some heart to it it's just it's kind of missing that i feel like it's just missing that little in-depth taika waititi storytelling he used to do really well a few years ago having said all that i'm going to give this movie a three out of five uh because it's just still a fun time to be had at the movies uh definitely would recommend for like five dollar tuesday um or you know like a matinee thing because i it's while i liked it it's it's just okay. That's all I. That's all I gotta say. Yeah, I mean that. I mean that's that's pretty much sums it all up. You know, like this is it's just a decent movie from a filmmaker that we've come to know to do better versions of this type of story. I'll say. Um, so yeah, you know, for me, this one is also going to be a, a three out of five. You know, 
very fun movie. Uh, I just want to quickly shout out Oscar Knightley and Rachel House. They play uh, Tabitha and uh, Ruth, the the couple that owns the the football club. They were so funny throughout the movie. Rachel House is a, a Taika Waititi mainstay. You know, she's been in a lot of his 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 work, and she's always great. But you know, just again, very fun, silly characters. Um, and they, we get to see them more than, than a lot of the other characters, but, and they were really great. So yeah, like this, this movie is just so fun. Oh, sorry. You're going to say something? Nothing. No, Bernie. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. It was also, I just want to say real quick. I love the movie references within this movie. Yes. It's so stupid. <laughs> Cause it's at the, it takes place in the 2011 and around that time, there are a lot of pretty popular movies. <laughs> and so it's just. When you talk about the couple, there's that one scene I couldn't get out of <laughs> with the tin cans. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, so, so as you see, I mean, like we think about certain aspects of this movie, and it does bring a laugh, you know. So definitely, it's, if you're gonna go in for just a, a light comedy, um, you're not gonna leave disappointed. But also, it's like it's hard to really sell that movie to people. You know, it's hard to like tell people to go spend all this money to go watch a movie that's not that filmmaker's best. You know, that it's just a decent time. So if you want to wait for like a manet or like a a five dollar Tuesday, or maybe wait for it to come on streaming, it will be one of those that when you put the movie on, you're gonna have a fun time, and you're just gonna enjoy it. You're gonna laugh at it, and. I, like I said, you're probably not going to think about it, you know, uh, later um, once you're done with the movie. But it serves its purpose. I wish it just could have done a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, he, he's done really well on the show side of things. Like, again, there's the pirate show he's done, Reservation Dogs, What We Do in the Shadows. Like, So he's he's still great at his craft. It's just the movies are like Thor, Love and Thunder, and this one are just lacking a little bit. So, um but yeah, like I said, for those of you, did you hear about this movie? Do you plan on seeing it or did you enjoy it? We'd love to know in the comments section. Uh, like I said, you know, this is definitely, um, you know, this is a big week. This is a Thanksgiving week. So hopefully you all wish you all the best uh, travels, you know, family plans, all that good stuff. Uh, we're nearing the end of the year. So I hope everyone's doing well. Um, until next time, though, stable day. Uh, my God, burn. Yeah, no, stable nation. Keep on renting. I thought I was taking your line for a second. It's just I'm getting <laughs> caught up in my own my own thing. And I just kept thinking of Armani and the roof and the the couple because they're so. They're, <laughs> it was all so dumb, but so great. I'm I'm sure if if Armani were here, he would tell the people to be good, <laughs> be safe, and as always, we'll see you guys on the next one.